This work is being done at the Haskins Laboratory. Here are three gentlemen who are concerned not only with the sight of sound, but with the sound of sight. Confusing idea, maybe, but one which will become clearer in a moment. This is Dr. Frank Cooper, an engineer and associate research director of the laboratory. This is Dr. Alvin Lieberman, a psychologist on the staff of Haskins Laboratories and associate professor of psychology at the University of Connecticut. <coughs> This is Dr. Pierre Delat, a linguist with Haskins Laboratories and professor of Romance <laughs> Languages at the University of Colorado. These three men and their colleagues are engaged in a very unusual problem concerned with the structure and the perception of speech. And they've built an instrument which we thought we'd like to show you. Dr. Cooper, just what is that equipment behind you? This is basically a speech recording machine. It differs somewhat from most sound recorders since this one records speech as a picture. The machine itself is called a sound spectrograph, and the pictures it makes are called visible speech by the Bell Laboratories people who developed this kind of speech recording. This is a light gun, and it exposes the photographic film, recording on it the analysis of the speech sounds. Well, Dr. Cooper, would you show us some of these pictures of speech? Why, yes. Over here is a viewing board, and on it we have a sentence, many are taught to breathe through the nose. That sentence was spoken into a microphone by Al Lieberman, and this photographic film was made from his voice. These are the words of the sentence and here are the spoken patterns as they were analyzed from the sounds that he spoke. <clears throat> However, this is only half the story. That whirring noise that you hear in the background is made by a second machine. We call it pattern playback, and it converts these patterns into speech. <clears throat> Here's a copy of the sentence we just saw painted on this endless belt. And here is how it sounds as the playback speaks it. Many are taught to breathe through the nose. Not high fidelity, but as research tools, these instruments have some very real advantages. However, it's obviously rather difficult to make a transmission in a room like this. Suppose I operate the machine while you ask Lieberman and Delat to tell you a little more about what we are trying to do. Here it is, as it was recorded from my voice by the sound spectrograph. And this is what it sounds like when we put it through the playback. Never kill a snake. Never kill a snake. If we paint the pattern by hand, copying carefully, and preserving most of the details, we get something that looks and sounds like this. Never kill a snake. Never kill a snake. We shouldn't have expected much difference since that painting was a fairly accurate copy. But now, let's hear what happens when the hand-painted version of the sentence is very much simplified, as it is here, and only the most basic parts of the pattern are included. Never kill a snake. Never kill a snake. And now, let's listen to them again in one, two, three order. Never kill a snake. Never kill a snake. Never kill a snake. Now, let me see if I understand this. The first picture was that of the actual recording of your voice. The next two were merely drawings progressively simplified from that. But who's doing the talking? Actually, the machine is talking, turning these pictures back into speech. As you've just heard, the speech is quite intelligible. Even when we throw away a great deal of the original sound, as we did here, and perhaps uh, if uh, Dr. Cooper will run this one through the machine again, but moving it very slowly, you can hear how the sounds change as the picture changes. In fact, you might like to see how some very simple patterns can be built up into speech sounds and words. And this is really synthetic speech. Do you have some other examples, Dr. Delat? Yes. 
Here is a rather strange one, which we made up some time ago to contain only the sounds that we thought or we knew how to produce at that time. A big bad man demanding money can kill you. Bang, bang. Well, that's certainly apropos for television. Here is the faded sentence, and uh, here is the sound of it as played on the paper. A big bad man demanding money can kill you. Bang, bang. A big bad man demanding money can kill you. Bang, bang. Well, that's incredible. <laughs>